Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to connect a legacy FireWire device to a Windows PC. In one of my past videos I showed you how to do this with a Mac laptop, and I got some questions asking if it's possible to do this on a PC. And the answer is yes, as long as you have a Thunderbolt 3 port on your PC computer, you should be able to use these same adapters in the same process to connect FireWire devices. In today's demonstration I have this old uh, Canon Mini DV camcorder which has a FireWire port and we're going to transfer the footage off of the tape on here onto this laptop. Now in the case of this camcorder uh, you may your camcorder may also have a USB port like this and you may be saying well why do I need all of these adapters if I already have a USB port can I just go from USB right into the laptop? Uh, well the answer is yes. If you want to give that a try, you certainly can. Uh, you can pick up just a standard USB to micro, or I'm sorry, not micro, mini USB. Um, this is a bigger style plug um, compared to micro USB, which most people recognize from phones and things. Um, you can certainly give it a try, but 99% of the time it is not going to work to transfer video off of your camcorder. And the reason for that is because they used to make little photo printers that you could dock your digital camera and your camcorder and that USB port was used for transferring still photos. The digital video that records on these tapes was too big, it was too much bandwidth to use through USB and that's why instead they included a FireWire port which is right here. Uh, this is a mini 4 pin FireWire port Sometimes it is listed as 1394, or Sony used to call it IEEE. It's all the same kind of port. Um, and this is not, you cannot convert this to USB. The two formats are not interchangeable. So if you see a cable online that says, you know, mini FireWire to USB-C, like it's not going to work. I've tried some, they don't work. You can read the reviews, you'll see other people will say they don't work. So USB, for the most part, not going to help us in this situation. So what you will need is a few different sets of cables and adapters here. So in my case, I, am, uh, I have a, a, an adapter here, which goes from a 4-pin mini FireWire 400 connection to a full-size FireWire 400 connection. And then I have a cable that goes from FireWire 400 to FireWire 800. You may, like I said, you may see, it may say 1394 on it. And in the case of uh, FireWire 800, it may say 1394B. And the FireWire 800 is that larger square connection. And then next up, you're going to need two adapters from Apple. And these ones are very important that you buy these, um, you, you buy the Apple branded ones. You don't have to buy them directly from Apple, uh, but you want to get the Apple branded ones because these these two adapters are the only ones that seem to work. I don't know what's so special about these, but all the third-party ones I've tested just don't work. Now, in the case of these FireWire cables and adapters, these are generally available. These are a standard kind of thing. You can pick up any name brand, any length, uh, whether you want a cable, a small adapter, it's up to you. Um, they, these all seem to work no problem. But these Apple adapters, these ones, I don't, again, I don't know what's special about them, uh, they're a little expensive, I know it, but they're the only ones that reliably work. So we'll start off here, and uh, this is a Thunderbolt 3 connection. It shares the same plug as USB-C, but like I said in the beginning of the video, this is not going to work if your laptop only has USB-C. You need to make sure it's a Thunderbolt 3 USB-C connector. And then this goes to Thunderbolt 2. And then you're going to take your Thunderbolt 2, connection and you're going to plug that in and then that adapts to FireWire 800 and then FireWire 800 you're going to plug in like that which takes you to FireWire 400 and then FireWire 400 into this mini connection so yes um, unfortunately they do not sell one you know one adapter to go directly from this plug to this plug unfortunately so you're going to need to pick up these four different things so next up in the case of this camcorder I'm going to go ahead and attach this connection here into this port like that. And then I'm going to take the Thunderbolt 3 connection and I'm going to plug this into the laptop. Okay, so now let me just move this here a little bit closer. 
in the case of a, um, maybe you have like an audio mixer or some audio capture device, you may need to install um, a special driver. So that is dependent on uh, the version of Windows you're using. In my case, this camcorder is actually plug and play. I didn't need to install any special drivers. I did need to install this special piece of software called HD, HDV Split. Um, and there's another th free program. This program's free. And there's another one called, um, there's a there's a version of it for just mini DV. So if this one doesn't work for you, um, I'll put a link to both of these in the video description. And you can try out both of them and see which one works uh, for your video camera. So next up, we're going to power on the camcorder. Most camcorders have this little wheel on the top that goes from record mode to play mode. So just move that over into the play position. And you'll hear the little noise there. Windows just detected it. And um, let's go over this software here. So there's there's really not too many options. It's it's pretty simple. It will tell you when your camcorder is connected here. It shows you the name, which is good. Um, we have playback controls, which we can test. If we want to just hit play here, you can hear the camcorder just started playing. So that's good. We have video, so we know um, the connection and everything is good. Um, now, one thing I will warn you is you want to queue up your tape to where you actually have video. If you have it on a blank section of the tape, the software will kind of freak out and say, oh, you know, I don't know, something's not working. Um, so make sure that you, um, you queue up your tape, you see uh, time on the screen. That will indicate that you have a recorded portion uh, on the tape. Uh, let's see, you can also choose to split your scene. So uh, as you start and stop recording from your video camera, it can either split them up into separate clips or you can have one big, long, gigantic file. In my case, I have that uh, set up to split the files. And I made a file on the desktop, a folder, I'm sorry, uh, that just says video capture. And I'm just going to put all the files in there. So we'll go ahead and hit that record button. Uh, now, the record button is recording it to the computer, not recording it on the camera. That's a little confusing, but... Um, so, yes, yeah, so we'll let this roll for just a few minutes. Um, I went out today and just captured some random video here of some things, just so we had something to do. And uh, you'll see here in the logs that it's actually... It detected the scene change, and it's going to make a separate file. So, um, it's pretty smart about that. You know, I will say, um, this this camcorder is one of the, the last camcorders that recorded on tapes, but it is HD. It's an HDV. Um, it records in 1080i. Um, but surprisingly, the video quality is really good. I was, I was really impressed. Um, uh, but certainly, if you have an older style camera uh, that's only mini DV, uh, I think that was like 480p. Um, still okay. Um, oh, one thing I should mention is these video clips are MPEG-2, um, which is not very common. So you may need to install a codec. A codec, uh, codec stands for compressor decompressor. And that is something that basically tells your computer um, how to decode the file that you're trying to play back. So if you try and play back these files and it doesn't work, uh, you may need to install, install um, a free codec called FFmpeg. I'll put that link down in the video description. Um, if you run into any problems, you can install that and give it a try. If you need a video playback program, I recommend VLC. Um, although Windows Media Player and some of the other ones that come pre-installed in Windows will probably work just fine. And then finally, so, when, so we just stopped here and we'll open up this file and you can see there's the four clips that it just made. And we'll open one of those up and uh, there you go. So um, you'll probably want to run these through a program called Handbrake to compress them. Uh, MPEG-2 is very large in size. Um, I mean, that like 20 second clip right there, let's see how big that is. Um, that clip alone is almost 120 megs. So that's, that's pretty um, big. That can add up uh, very quickly if uh, you have like a 30 minute or an hour long video. That's going to be gigs and gigs in size. So you'll probably want to run these through Handbrake, convert them to MP4. Uh, that will save a lot of space and preserve uh, pretty much all the quality. I think that's that's about it. Like I said, um, I will put links down in the video description to all these different adapters and plugs and, and software and everything you'll need. Um, if you do need to purchase these adapters, please purchase them using my affiliated Amazon links. 
Basically what that means is your price stays the same, but a small commission may come back to support my channel. Um, I really appreciate it when you guys use those affiliated links. They really help um, support my time and efforts in making these videos. I, I like helping you guys out, um, but you know we all don't have uh, as much free time as we you know wish we had. So if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments, and I'll try my best to help you guys out. And uh, with that, I think that's going to do it for today. I hope you found this useful, and uh, have a great day.